Moving to a new country can be quite overwhelming and you might not be aware of the next step or the next process to take. So in today's video, I'll be talking to you guys about the important things you should sort out during your first few weeks when you come into Canada, but not just Canada, into a new country period. So if this topic interests you, keep on watching. hey guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here you're welcome if you're an oldie thank you so much for coming back my name is neka Izaya, and i upload immigration and lifestyle content right here on my channel you're welcome and i hope you enjoy today's video as you can tell from the title of today's video i'll be talking to you guys about the important things you should sort out during your first few weeks when you arrive into canada this list can be sort of individualized depending on your situation but most of the things i'm going to be listing in today's video pertains to every new immigrant coming into canada Canada. For this video to be a bit organized, I'm going to be starting with the things that you can do in the airport when you initially arrive, then I'll be working my way to the things that you can do outside of the airport. The first thing on my list is get your study permit or your work permit printed at the airport. I mean, this is something that the immigration officers tend not to miss because it is very important, but it's also something that you should be aware of. So when you're coming into Canada, right, maybe as a student or as a worker, you're going to be coming in with a visa the visa that is going to be printed on your passport but when you arrive into canada you're going to be given a study permit or a work permit depending on your situation right your study permit or your work permit doesn't guarantee you entry back into the country i've made several videos about this topic i will leave links right here so you can kind of understand what i'm talking about your study permit works hand in hand with your visa okay so if you plan on leaving the country you have to make sure that your study permit and your visa are not expired and if maybe you are a permanent resident coming into canada for the first time you're going to be coming in with your copr and your passport your your permanent residence card your pr card is going to be mailed to you at the address you're going to stay in in canada after a couple of weeks and one very very important thing you have to be aware of is aside your study permit being printed and given to you at the airport you have to also make sure that every single detail on that study permit or work permit is correct so your name your date of birth every single information has to be correct before you decide to leave the airport because when you leave the airport to change that is going to be so difficult i personally went through a situation like that so you have to make sure that every single thing printed on that piece of paper is correct the second on this list is sin which is social insurance number sin is a nine digit number given to you in order for you to work or assess government benefits and programs here in canada sin is like basically your identity it is so important and it is your responsibility to protect your sin your sin can only be given to your employer only after you're sure that you've gotten the job the second is when you're going to open a bank account in a financial institution the third situation when you need to disclose your sin is if you need to file for your taxes or if you need access like government benefits or program or things like that so those are the situations when you need to disclose your sin you can actually get your social insurance number at the airport but that's only when you arrive during the working or business hours but if you don't arrive during those hours you can get your social insurance number at any service canada that is close to you okay the documents needed to get your sin are your passport and your immigration document so your study permits your work permits and your copr if you are coming in as a permanent resident you also have to know that your social insurance number is given to you with the duration of your immigration document so maybe if you're coming in as a student and you're taking a one-year program your study permit is going to obviously be for one year so your social insurance number is going to be issued to you based on the duration of your study permit and maybe if you decide to take another program then you would have to go back to service canada to extend your social insurance number with a valid study permit the third on my list is cell phone plan or sim card there are some cell phone companies at some airports here in canada but honestly i wouldn't advise you get a cell phone plan at the airport because i just feel like you might not get great deals there there are different kinds of cell phone companies here in canada they have tvtel they have bell they have fido or fido they have tellers 
so many right i would personally advise you don't necessarily have to do this but i'll personally advise that you don't get a sim or cell phone plan when you're still transiting and i say this because when you get a cell phone plan in your city you might get better deals there and the second is that you would have the area code for your city every city has its own area code for example the area code for my city which is thunder bay is 807 if you get a cell phone plan maybe in toronto right i know toronto has like three different area codes there's 416 there's 647 and there's another one that I can't remember right now. And you're going to reside in Tondo Bay. You will have like a different area code from your city. Like I said, you don't have to do this, but I would actually just advise that you'd get your phone number or your cell phone plan when you arrive in the city you're sure you're going to reside in the fourth thing on this list is open a bank account and get a credit card don't just open a bank account and get a debit card also get a credit card as well credit card helps you build a credit history right and your credit history is so important because if you want to buy a car if you want to buy a house if you want to get a loan if you want to even move into some apartments in some apartments your landlord is going to ask for your credit history so it's very important that you start building your credit history right off the bat that's if you intend on staying in canada but if you intend on leaving you don't have to do it and it's not important right but if you intend on residing in canada start building your credit score on time there are different kinds of financial institutions here in canada td the scotia bank there's rbc there's standard the required documents for opening your bank account is your passport and your social insurance number banks here in canada have like great benefits for newcomers they kind of call it newcomers benefits or newcomers program i know scotia bank has free banking and also has like free movies for international students okay so you can use that to your advantage i know td Scotia bank and rbc have programs for newcomers so i'm going to be leaving the links in the description box so you can just check that out whenever you want to the next on my list is find an immigrant serving organization immigrant serving organization are organizations that are organized by the government okay to help newcomers or new immigrants when they initially get into canada they can help you with things like finding a job finding schools that are suitable for your kids just basically help you settle in and they also help give you advice on certain things that you might not be aware of when you initially come into canada as a new immigrant so they are of high importance to immigrants and the great thing about it is that most of these organizations are supported by the government so most of the services they render are for free i'm going to leave a link in the description box where you can put in your address or put in your postal code and it will show you the immigration servicing organization that is closest to you so definitely use this to your advantage and it's for free so why not the next on my list is get your health insurance sorted out get it sorted out what is that saying again health is well so health is very very important just in case of any emergencies when you come into canada activate or figure out your health insurance i know different provinces have different health insurance plan the coverage requirements and everything but here in ontario we have something known as OHIP, which is the Ontario Health Insurance Plan. OHIP doesn't cover every single person and it doesn't also cover every single thing. I know as an international student here in Ontario, OHIP doesn't cover international students. Every school has their own special health insurance for their students and you basically pay for this when you're paying for your tuition fee if you go through your tuition fee and the uh, details of it there's a particular part that would definitely say health insurance okay so when you get into canada go to the international department of your school ask them questions concerning your health insurance just so that in case something happens you know definitely that you're good after you know that you're definitely eligible for ohip you can now go to service ontario which is the organization that is in charge of health insurance here in ontario you go there and you can now register to get your health insurance card i'll leave a link in the description box that can help or aid you check your eligibility for the health insurance plan here in ontario the next thing on my list is finding an accommodation i know that finding accommodation can be a bit of a roughy situation right but one thing i always advise people to do in terms of finding accommodation as new immigrants is plan a temporary accommodation first before you arrive into canada most people use airbnb some people use hotels and some people also use like monthly apartments where you can pay for 
your permit every month so you don't need to sign any contract or sign any lease for a certain period of time okay and within a couple of days or the couple of weeks you stay in that temporary accommodation you can use the opportunity to check out apartment and accommodation you can also use the opportunity to even tour the city look around see places meet new people okay alongside with viewing apartment you can also go to websites like kijiji rent panda facebook market just so that you have like a wider range of options and you can make choices faster i actually made a detailed video on finding an apartment when you come into canada i'll leave it up here somewhere so you can check that video out and i'll also be leaving links to the websites that can help you to find apartments here in canada in the description box so you can also check that out as well the next thing on my list is job search and finding a job so as size the newcomers organization helping you with this you can also help yourself by going to drop your resumes at you know companies organizations that you would really want to work at you can start local before you decide to go to websites like indeed i've spoken about this in a previous video but i'll mention it again here go for job fairs organized by your community or even organized by a college or university job fairs are very 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 good they can really really help you i mean dropping your resumes in local places is great right but just having a place where every organization comes together under one roof for the main aim of finding people to employ it's just amazing and something that can also help with this is going through job websites like indeed you can open a linkedin account as well so website like that will really help in your job search journey the next on my list is get your driver's license this is definitely not a need for everyone when initially getting to canada but getting your driver's license for someone who wants to get a car is very important you can use your foreign driver's license here for 60 days before you exchange it for the canadian license so my advice is if you want to start driving immediately when you get into canada and you want to purchase a car i would advise you to start this early because 60 days can go in seconds literally so that when that time comes your driver's license is ready to go i'll leave a link down below that can help you understand this better and this leads to my next point which is get a bus pass so if you intend on not driving anytime soon it will be advisable and more cost effective if you get a bus pass or sometimes they call it like a presto card depending on the city you stay in when i was going to school my college had free bus passes for students right but this might not be the case for you so you would want to go to the international department of your school and ask them if they give free bus passes if they don't getting a bus pass is going to be your next best option the final thing on this list is explore enjoy yourself socialize live your life enjoy life this life is only one you have so enjoy it meet new people join a community that you genuinely have an interest in explore your city even if you're alone explore try and find new hobbies if you're in a french-speaking province maybe quebec and you're an english speaker you can go into learning French just so that it can be easier for you to communicate. Try and just enjoy your stay here. Make new friends or acquaintances. Like, just really enjoy your stay because if you don't, trust me, you'll be very, very, very lonely, especially if you're coming into a country alone without knowing anyone at all. So try and, you know, find the little pockets of joy that you can enjoy in your environment or in people, okay? Practice gratitude. You're in a new country, you're in a new culture, so it is definitely worth celebrating, okay? All right, guys, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned a thing or two. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my YouTube YouTube channel and also turn on the post notifications down below so you can get notified every single time i upload a new video thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next one bye guys <laughs> bye